Just listen. A universal language. The language of speed, competition, and glory. Just look. More than 100 years of history etched into the fibers of Indianapolis Motor Speedway, not unlike the hieroglyphs of ancient Egypt. 300,000 people set to fill the Cathedral of Racing to watch 33 drivers compete to write their own legend and achieve racing immortality. And we're giving you a front seat to the festive gathering that we like to call Breakfast at the Brickyard. This is WRTV's Breakfast at the Brickyard, sponsored by Edmondson RV. Welcome in. It's 10 o'clock here on race morning. Welcome to Breakfast at the Brickyard, getting a live look at the main straightaway here at the start finish line as we count down the final hours to the 106th running of the Indianapolis 500. And what a great morning it is. We're here live at the start finish line. Mark Mullins, Nicole Griffin, and Todd Clausen. Guys, beautiful. All right. This and is my first experience down uh -oh, here. Uh-oh, welcome to the I'm controlled I'm chaos, I'm as I've been calling it all morning. <laughs> uh, you know, things are really starting to build, and, and welcome to the party here. We, we've had the cars come out to pit lane already, so that's good news, right? But now we can see the Purdue band starting to come down the front stretch, and so now we're really starting to get into the heart here of the morning leading up to the running of the 106. And the Purdue band usually plays black back home again in Indiana, yeah. which is a story tradition here at the race. Yeah, they'll file in, and they'll end up over here, and they'll practice, and so this is the real fun part. You know, it's been people, but now we got cars, we got the activity, we got the pop and circumstance. Yeah, fans are making their way in. My dad and my husband are on their way. They said they're stuck in traffic on 38th Street, so leave early. You know, a lot of people have left early, and they're filling up the stands here already. Packing that time. Nicole and I were at gate one to begin the morning, yes. made our way here. Most people are now down in this area. They want to do the tradition. They want to kiss the bricks, take pictures with the Borg Warner Trophy, and then find their seats. So many traditions here. I can't wait to be a part of it all. <laughs> this is so neat, especially for an Indiana girl to be right? here at the Motor right. Speedway. I know. M Mark and I have been down here on yes. the start finish line yes. for a few years. For years. For years. For years. For years. <laughs> yeah. But I, you Good know, and, and, and correct me, Mark, I mean, last two years we didn't have this. It just seems a little even more busier than years past. Well, I think a lot of people were hungry for this event yeah. to come back. They wanted to do it in person. And like they, like we've been reporting, this crowd is expected to be as big as the 2019 yeah. crowd, or well, before that, and then the biggest crowd back in 2016. Uh, they're very excited to have everybody And, and the down. weather couldn't be better. Right, Perfect. exactly. exactly. We've got an exciting hour lined up for you. Let's kick things off with Brad Brown. Brad, you're roaming around. Mark and Nicole and Todd, all of the people who are not at the start finish line, I think, are down here at the south end of pit lane toward turn one. We are down here where pretty soon in the span of about the next 30 minutes or so, they will start to roll those cars from pit lane around that corner and out onto the grid to start to set up the 11 rows of three for the pre-race ceremonies. And it is indeed a busy time down here. Eventually, the former Champions Parade is going to get a chance to get going. We've got some vintage car laps that are coming as well. And eventually, all of these grandstands along the front stretch and inside here. Hi, you're good. You're alive. We're on TV. Hi, guys. There it is. There's a live crowd this morning. They're here ready for race day. Every one of these seats is going to be full in the span of the next couple of hours as we get set to go to the green flag. Tony Kanan will be starting up in the front of the field as well. Had a chance to talk to TK here on race day morning just a short time ago. All right, Tony Kanan, 21st Indianapolis 500. I can drink now. <laughs> I'm legal. <laughs> Champagne when you're ready. <laughs> Milk first, right? Uh, absolutely. Uh, just tell me the vibe of this team. We talked to Chip on Friday. He has lots of smiles. Talking to Scott, talking to Jimmy. Man, you guys are feeling really good coming into this, it seems. I mean, Brad, we, we built a very strong team. You know, I think Chip uh, didn't just pick us because he likes us. He knew we all could be winners at this race. And uh, what an, an unbelievable job we've done up until today. Like he just said in our race meeting this morning, it doesn't matter now. You know, you got to prove it all over again. So, but awesome job by the team. Five cars in the fast, in the top 12, four cars in the fast six. So uh, it's up to us now. You learn anything over 20 years of doing this. It just kind of, every time we talk to one of the drivers when they miss on a day here, they can go back and add all that up. 
does that do anything to make the equation, or you're still just kind of at the mercy of this place, it seems, sometimes? I, I always said that the track picks the winner, so what I've learned over the years, it's not to worry about things I can't control. So something can break, we can have a bad stop, I can make a bad judgment. If I try to minimize everything, all the things I can control, and the outcome is not what I want, that means the track didn't pick me this time. And uh, I, this track owes me nothing. Uh, this, these fans are unbelievable to me. I mean, I had one of the greatest experience again yesterday in the parade, and I'm pretty sure they're going to make me cry in driver's intro. So uh, absolutely, I, 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 I'm extremely humbled just to be part of it. But I know I have a car to win, and I'll do everything I can Good. to do so. Get to work, brother. Safe drive. Thank you. One of those five Chip Ganassi racing cars, and we will see if TK is able to put one together here just like he did back in 2013. The fans from Brazil are here. There they are. Look at that. There they are. And all of these fans down here in turn one getting set to go for race day. Some TK fans, some LAO fans, they are all more than ready as we count down toward the green flag. Just now about two and a half hours till these cars will roll off on the parade laps on our way to the 106th Indianapolis 500. It is a dynamite. Day down here on the track. Megan Chin is up there high atop Pagoda Plaza with a great view of the action. Megan, good morning and happy race day. Good morning, Brad. Happy race day to you, too. We also can see the red carpet from where we're at. So we have this fantastic view. You can see some of the celebrities arriving earlier on. I got the privilege of seeing Jordan Fisher, who's going to be the national anthem singer, Broadway celebrity, of course. And we do know with the green flag, Miles Teller will be waving the green flag to start the greatest spectacle in racing and so much more. We also saw the Thunderbirds out here who will do a flyover earlier, later today, rather, with the national anthem. Them. So we're so excited to see all of this activity here. You can really feel the energy and feel the festivities of the Indianapolis 500. Really, the 106 running is spectacular so far. Of course, we have more than 300,000 people, Hoosiers and people from everywhere, ready to see this race, ready to feel the energy and enthusiasm, ready to be back home again in Indiana. We're so excited to have everyone out here. Of course, the weather looks pretty good so far. Luckily, the wind is stopped blowing up here, but we have a beautiful view of the whole area from the Pagoda area. So at this point in time, we are definitely keeping an eye on this growing crowd. And Raphael and Kevin, how are things looking out there for you? <laughs> Well, Megan, Hello. thank you so much. I, Megan, I have to be honest with you here at Pagoda Plaza. I really can't see beyond ground level, so I really <laughs> depend on the newest Am edition. Am I your periscope? You are now my Skycam 6. You're the official drone of WRTV well, that, on the you know, ground. We haven't done what, this yet. What do you see? Okay. What do you see? Well, let's start right over here. This is Pagoda Plaza, and there's a gatekeeper to that area. So this is a lot of hospitality, and you can see the companies the there that are hosting people. But in the middle of all that is public seating with shade at a table. Um, and this is a huge area pre-race. So you come in here, you get your picture, which is the easy part. Then you try to find your seat. And that's like a treasure hunt. And, and if you're new to the track and you show up in the first turn and somebody tells you, oh, you're in the fourth turn, <laughs> then you realize the immensity of this place. Now, this is one of the few places that can actually hold a number of other major buildings, like the White House, the Roman Coliseum, yeah. you name it. <laughs> you don't think it's so big when you drive by 16th and Georgetown, but this is an enormous place, Tom. I think once you, you kind of... Everybody has the routine, so you kind of pick your spots. You, you do know where your seats are because uh, you've probably been sitting in them for years. But what's really fun here is that literally we can stop almost any person at random and they have a story. They have a connection. For example, let's stop this gentleman. Hi, sir. You are live on WA, on ABC. Well, how are you? I'm well. You look fantastic. Well. How, how many races have you come to? Oh, my God. I worked here for 20 years and then... In probably 99, we started, my son and I started coming. Are you a lifelong Hoosier? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. so tell me your first memories of coming to the track, and how is it that you ended up working at the track? Well, started in the first turn, of course. That, that was the real snake bed. Okay. And uh, went there for a few years, and then uh, at my work, one of the guys worked here, okay. and you know, there were some nice perks. 
yeah. with that. Dang. I have, so here you oh. are. Here you are. Well, listen. my old bed. Did you use your old bed? You, <laughs> okay. Well, listen. <laughs> We want to thank you for stopping by. We thank you for sharing your story. We have so many people. Some of our friends are all over the place. Mark and Nicole, tell me what you're seeing there at the Yard of Bricks. There you go. Yeah, good morning. It is getting loud down here. The excitement is building. The marching band from Purdue is passing by now. I can just feel all the electricity in the air. That's right. And the band is going through here to, as they're leaving. But we've just been told that the Borg Warner Trophy is so close to arriving at the Yard of Bricks. And you want to talk about frenzy. Everybody <laughs> crowds the trophy when it gets that close. I cannot wait to see it. This it, is so neat. You know, the band's coming in, making Ke Kevin Gregory proud. The big old big drum just went in for <laughs> They're Purdue. all kissing the bricks. I, 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 they're all kissing the bricks as they go, they go by the band. I need to ask Kevin if he has one of those silver hats, if he wore one of those. I'm sure he is. I think oh, yeah. he's got the silver I'm hair now. I don't know if he has the yeah. silver hat. Total it's boiler maker silver hat. There. But <laughs> boiler maker true and through and through. So from what I can see is the, uh, I just saw the trophy making its way down the straightaway. By the time you come back to us next time, we should have it here to be able to show you. Look at this. ABC, live. Hey, we're live, indeed. We're passing phones around. Okay, so if I stood here and said we have two-time Indy 500 champion Ari Leyendijk here, that'd be one thing. But David Hasselhoff is in Indianapolis. These guys have a strong connection. Kind of give the folks who don't know your, your IndyCar connection here. Ari was the driver. We had a team called Race for Life, and we, we brought maybe, maybe 500 kids to, to the track. And they all had leukemia. And ter I, I just got a picture from one of them. Who made it? Who's still alive? Oh, yeah. Then, exactly. then we. Uh, I went to the Newman Haas team, and and, and I, where'd you go? Uh, I'm a guy in racing, I believe, in '87. But yeah, we worked together in '86, and he brought through uh, Make a Wish Foundation, yeah. and what was the the other uh, charity? Uh, uh, Make no, a Wish Foundation. Make a Wish Foundation, and uh, I can't remember. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, but he he brought hundreds of children to the track, and it was very around, very drove, touching. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah, very, not always easy to be around no. uh, children that are terminally ill, but uh, he did that for, I don't know, you still might even do it now. Well, it's, it's lasted 16 years and yeah. goes all over, all over, all, all the indie tracks and all the indie races. So it's great to be back. I sang the national anthem here. Yeah, and, and, that's right. And it's Jim, it's Jim Neighbors, right? Back yeah. home in Indiana. <laughs> yeah. Great tradition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to Indy. Thank you very yeah. much, man. Ari, how has the buzz been for you to see kind of around these last couple of weeks getting set for what's going to be a massive race here? Well, you know, I work in race control. I'm one of the race stewards together with Max Pappish. So whenever there's a penalty coming guys ways today, then you know where it comes from. <laughs> and 99% uh, they're justified. <laughs> um, you know, when they speed in the pits, it's just a ticket that pops out of a machine, so that's an automatic penalty, unfortunately, yep. for them. But no, the buzz is amazing today. It's just like it, you know, before the pandemic. And I think it's going to be busier than the couple of races before the pandemic, so it's great to see. What was it like to see Dixon on pole day, 234, putting up some of the speeds like you guys were doing back in the mid-90s there? It was a wild show. Yeah, yeah, it was great to see those speeds. And I've always uh, said, you know, I hope they break my track record. Yeah. And of course, he's the fastest pole sitter ever. Yep. Uh, I wasn't on the pole that uh, weekend, but um, I always said if we get close to the breaking the record, it for sure will bring more fans out, I'm sure, for qualifying. And I hope to see that in the next couple of years when they change the rules. You're in quite a lineup back here yeah, with yeah. all these former champions. This is always the fun part of the day for you guys, though, I'm sure. Yeah, this is where you see each other after a, a year or longer and, uh, you know, exchanging stories, having good laughs, and it's just a... Uh, an amazing atmosphere, and it's still great to be part of this great race. Have a great race day. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Good. Ari Leyendijk, the two-time winner, and the Hoffs taking some pictures down here. As the fun continues, Nikki Dimitri's having some fun, too, as we continue the countdown toward the green flag. Brad, you might have David Hasselhoff, but guess who I have? I have Daniel. I'm here in Section 82, right behind Gate 2. Daniel. Tell me about this outfit. I mean, how could you not talk to this man? Had the pants for about 20 years, added the shirt this year. Next year, gonna have the bucket hat, so we'll be checkered from head to toe all the way through. 
37 years you've been coming for it. Not the same pants for 37 years. Let me tell you that, everyone. We got new pants this year, yeah. which is a good thing because I heard the old pants were a little bit much. It's fine. Yeah. Tell me, you guys have been in the same seats for 37 years? 37 years, same seats, got to have them. This whole crew, we come every yeah. year, 37 years. 37 years, same seats, almost the same pants. Next year, we're going to have the bucket hat as well. Come back next year and see us here. Perfect. We'll come back next year. We'll make that a promise. We'll come back right here to Section 82, Row H. Row H. Row H. Row H, seats 1 through 12. Seats 1 through 12. Well, we'll see you guys here next year. Mark, Nicole, Todd, we had Daniel. I heard David Hasselhoff. Who do you guys have? Yeah, we're in the pit lane here. Thanks, uh, Nikki. And things really escalating uh, very quickly here very in uh, pit quickly. lane. It's you know, easy. there's been a ton of people on pit lane, but what's really filling in now, the seats here. Everybody is starting to uh, fill in and find their seats. Well, that's what they were encouraging people to do, uh, yeah, to get to their seats sooner, yes. because there are so many people to get into place this year. And I can tell they're sitting in the sunshine. It's absolutely <laughs> beautiful. I'm sure they're getting nice and warm up there. Yeah, sunscreen will be your best friend oh, yeah. today, by the way. Make sure you have sunscreen and a lot of water if you're coming out here. Because even though we're getting into the 80s, the humidity's down, so it doesn't feel right. really hot and muggy. Uh, but that sun will get you, trust me. And I'll tell you what, at the start finish, at uh, gate one actually, we saw people bringing their their sunscreen yeah, in, but cans. they were using aerosol cans. Yeah. So, so they, you had can't, to leave them. they had to leave them, so you cannot bring uh, aerosol okay. cans. That's good to know. I, did, I didn't know that. Right. Yes, Especially with the wind, you'd be getting sunscreen on the people down there. <laughs> right. couple, couple seats down. Uh, the trophy, by the way, the Borg Warner is on the yard of bricks right out there at the start finish line, right under. Uh, where they wave the white and green and checkered flag. So th things are really starting to escalate. Uh, right now we're going back to go to Plaza though to Kevin and uh, Raphael. What are you guys seeing out there? And hey, welcome back to Pagoda Plaza. Archbishop Thompson joins us now. I know you you had mass earlier today. Is that for drivers, the public? It's, it's for the public. There, Father Joe Felton, another priest here, had two masses earlier for the workers. So this was pretty much all public. So you will give the invocation. Yes. And and how do you approach that? Um, you, you you have a limited amount of time, and I'm sure you have a, a lot to say. What are parameters that you work with? Well, they give me the, the, the amount of time to do it in, and so um, and then there's a monitor for me, and I practice it several times, so I make sure I stay within that within that area, and then make sure I pronounce it. So it's memorized. Oh, almost. Okay. And you have how much time? Now uh, this year, 45 seconds. So they tell me. Yeah. Well, they won't take the mic. <laughs> Archbishop, as you know, I often make you do this because I want to find out from you. Here we go. Here we go, Archbishop. There you go. You know, I want to see you wearing this at one of the masses. But uh, what is your favorite memory so far? You've done this now for a number of years. What, what is your favorite moment here at the track? Being interviewed by you, of course. <laughs> Just be, being out here with people, just watching wonderful people, having a great time, and just families and just um, just friends coming together, especially after the pandemic, just being able to come back together. I love this time of year, the, the beauty, the warmth. I like the heat. Uh, uh, just just great to have the, the, the fanfare and just, you know, the world's eyes are on Indianapolis today. Now, the last time you and I met, as you may recall, you mentioned that your mother is a, a fan of WRTV, and I sent with you a box of chocolates. Did your mother get the chocolates? She absolutely did, and she's been begging me to get your address to send you a thank you. She feels like she's not treat, she's not doing her job by not sending a thank you to you. So Listen, I'm just trying to get to heaven, so any help that you can give me to get there, if, if Mama Thompson can help me help you, help us, that's a good thing. I tell you what, we, you and I pray for each other. That's how we help each other get to heaven, all right? And with Mama Thompson, too. Well, we will hear your chance. booming voice soon over the PA system and you have an exact time right the exact time 12 18 12 18 everything is run exactly. precision timing exactly. here yep. at we, the we don't want to make you late and I, I tell you what maybe next year you can wear this jacket we'll see all right, all we'll, right. we'll check with Doug Bowles I'm not sure, I'm sure there's protocols about what you can wear for an invocation and you can sneak off with a coat yes <laughs> I think you had me put this on so you so you can show people how much better you look in it than I do <laughs> oh I don't think so. my color kind of goes with my uh, wardrobe it, it, you have you have it going on Archbishop I think you can really rock that during the mass we'll see there you go all right all right have a great day thank you guys nice to see you
Brad is in the garage area, and the garage area is coming Move alive. It. We just Move heard it. from A.J. Foyt not long ago, Tony Kanan, and David Hasselhoff. He sang the national anthem in 86, 1986. <laughs> is that us? I think we're here. Okay, we've done one better than Gasoline Alley or the garage area. We're down here in turn one, and I've stumbled upon a collection of about 15 or so collective Indy 500 champions right here. Danny Sullivan is here, Mario Andretti, Johnny Rutherford, Dario Franchitti, Ryan hunter Ray is back the other way. Rick Mears is making his way down here. These guys, oh, Mario is, Mario is all sorts of energetic. Dario, do you have as much energy as Mario? Absolutely not. <laughs> He's incredible, isn't he? We were just talking about his, uh, I don't know if it's his debut or his re-debut in Formula One when he's going to drive the McLaren, so we're just, uh, I think he's, this is his training regime. <laughs> Mario's warming up. Mario, are you getting ready to race today? You're getting loose. Oh, yes. Yeah, we're ready. <laughs> How's the day feel here? It really feels like just such a massive event. Oh, fantastic. The weather is a blessing. Yeah, it's beautiful weather. Couldn't be any better. Johnny Rutherford back here as well. JR, how you doing today? I'm any better. I couldn't stand it. Right? Yeah, it's good. What's it been like to see this week come together and what this oh, field has put it's together? Incredible. It's incredible. It looks like the old days. Mario and I uh, know about the old days here and how, how many people were here. It's going to be that way again today, and it's wonderful. What's the parade like for you all to get on a chance here just to see what's going on on a day like this and soak it all in? Well, that's, that's part of it, you know. Uh, we've been there and done that. Now we got to come here and do this, so it's, uh, it's a little something easier. different, something a little different, yes. Enjoy the day. Thank you. Good. Yes, Speaking of AJ, Foyt's, Foyt's rolling in here right now. We'll see where he's going. We're going to turn this way, and you can bring him through. We'll wheel him through. Yep. AJ can wave. Absolutely. That's it. Yeah, yeah, you're good. We already talked to AJ. We'll come around this way. Yeah. Polly, come back over here. We're going to catch up with Danny Sullivan, too. Danny was named to the IMS Hall of Fame just a couple nights ago. Danny? What a wave. Hi. We'll see it again. Stay right there. You're good. Danny, coming in behind you. Hi. Yep. And in for a kiss. Chat live. That's good. Yep. Hi, Danny. We're doing live TV, so just hang. Congrats on the Hall of Fame. Thank you Just saying a Thursday night. Kind of tell me, what is this like for you when you get back here with the gang, back here with the guys and get a chance to share the stories and all this? Well, I mean, to meet with everybody and talk and see old friends, mechanics, yellow shirts, everybody. But I have no pressure yeah. today. Oh, I got a little pressure. I got to drive that uh, the old Al Unser car. That's right. But but no pressure. But look at this place. What a what a fabulous ambiance. It's just so cool to come back and and enjoy it. You mentioned the yellow shirts and some of the old timers here. How neat is it when you were a young driver here? These people are still here and they're still part of the tradition. I, I know, but it is part of the tradition, and they made our life. They made it easy for us, and they were good to us and stuff like that, most of them, no, all of them. Everybody was good. But there's just such an experience here, and there's so much tradition, which I think is what we all forget, is how much tradition's here at Indy. Love it. Enjoy the day. Thank you all. Good. 1985 winner Danny Sullivan. Thanks, Mario, Dario, JR. The champions are all here. We'll show them off as we go to break. The countdown rolls along. Linda Vaughn is here as well. All the stars are coming out for the 106th Indianapolis 500. Back with more Breakfast at the Brickyard next here on WRTV. This is WRTV's Breakfast at the Brickyard, sponsored by Edmondson RV. Welcome back to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It is a beautiful race morning here at IMS, ahead of the 106th running of the Indy 500. You can see the fans starting to fill the stands here at IMS, ahead of the greatest spectacle of racing. It's exciting out here. The energy is incredible here. I mean, to be standing here in the middle of all these people, you would never know that we had a pandemic <laughs> a couple of years. I mean, it, it, there are so many people out here today. I I, I think a lot of people are making up for lost time oh, the yeah, past yeah. two years oh, yeah. not being able to be out here. You know, as chaotic as it 
kind of is and seems. It's so good to see, though, everybody feels back good. at the track. It just feels so good to have all these people back. And just knowing the traditions that so many families have of, you know, decades worth of races together. And even though I know Doug Bowles made his proclamation during the COVID year, it still counts as a consecutive race. It just seems different. So it's just good to get all those families and groups and everybody back together once again. Well, it's like the theme of this year's race is continuing with the traditions, yeah. uh -huh. moving forward in that way. And you can really feel that here today. Yeah. Everybody getting in the spirit, too. Like, I, I want to bring one of our technicians, our oh, uh, engineers in. This is Doug. And Doug uh, uh, is married to a manicurist who does experiments on him, oh, and she okay. did uh, this one today. <laughs> Loving it. Job too. Yeah. I love it. It, 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 it is, I mean, the, the pattern's perfect. Right. There you go. Two, two thumbs up with the forecast for the day today, that's two for sure. Thumbs up. <laughs> two thumbs. And if I had a third thumb, I'd give a third thumbs up. Oh so. my gosh, we really lucked out, especially with a couple rainy days earlier this right? week. Right, you know, we got all the rain out of the way on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Perfect so it's been good. So free to enjoy the 106th running today. Yeah. We really enjoyed out there. Let's uh, send things over to Pagoda Plaza, where... <laughs> 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 where uh, Kevin and Raphael are standing by. Hey, guys. <laughs> Welcome back to Breakfast at the Brickyard with the mayor of Indianapolis, Joe Hoxton. Welcome. It's good to see you in the official WRTV Pagoda Plaza suit jacket. Kevin, <laughs> he looks good, doesn't he? Raphael says is putting this coat on you every year is a measure of your fitness because it always seems to fit perfectly. I may, uh, I may try to sneak out of here with it on this year because I love it so much. Will that come out of Raphael's paycheck? Oh, believe me, he has many of these. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, a day like today, every mayor in this country would love to have this facility. Well, first of all, every mayor would love to live in Indianapolis 317, right? So that's, that's a given. But to have this event in their jurisdiction, I mean, <laughs> what a gift. It's almost like a coming out party, Raphael, after the last two years. I mean, you walk around the, the grounds today, everybody's got a smile on their face, everybody is happy, there's so much energy, there's so much exuberance. After the last two years to have over 300,000 people come together at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, um, I'm proud of Indianapolis. I think it shows us to be the resilient city that we are. and. Um, I'm looking forward to a great race this afternoon. You're a Hoosier kid. For you, what does this mean? When you look back at whatever year you want to pick and you say, that's my Indiana. What, 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 where, where does that take you? What, what year do you go to? What race do you go to that says, this is my place? Well, you know, it really began not with a race, but a place. You know, I'm from Rushville, Indiana, and our race day traditions were very well established. We cooked out in the backyard, filled the picnic table full of food, and we listened to the Indianapolis 500. Sid Collins, that's a name from the past, yeah. Paul Page, we would listen on the radio. And it wasn't until I was older, uh, and then now my adult years, I've spent entirely in Indianapolis, that we started attending the race. So when I think back about my first memories of the race, it's Jimmy Clark, it's Graham, uh, uh, Hill, it's AJ Foyt, Mario Andretti, and it's always on the radio. You've gone old school on us, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's interesting is that when you listen to the older races, they didn't do turn announcing. So in other words, it wasn't what's happening first, second, third, fourth turn. It was the overall view and a lot of interviews. It seems foreign to the way it's covered today. That's right, and I'll say that um, you know, it's the coverage has just gotten better every single year, both radio and TV. You get a second or two, they're coming into the first turn side by side. TK's taking the lead down low, and then the next guy goes. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. should do radio. He should do radio. Yeah, I tell you. But the, the sun is out. The wind is blowing. It's going to be a great day. Wear sunscreen. But Nikki Dementri is there to give us all the coverage. Nikki, what's happening where, where you're at right now? Raphael, we are in a crowd of people heading into the track, heading to their seats right now. But I want to first introduce you to this family you see back home again. But this is a tradition. So truly back home again. Oh, yeah. Back home again in Indiana. We're a big family, the Logston family. We come from 11 different states. There's about 40 of us here. Uh, Anna and Papa, who are not 
88 years old, and they made it up in the stands. So we're real excited. We got them up in there, got them settled. So we're just going to look around, maybe pick up some T-shirts. And so uh, big tradition for us. There you go. 92 and 84? 80, 88. 88. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're going to keep coming until it's over, you know. So, you know. So uh, Tell me, how old were you all when you first started coming? Jackson? I was eight years old. Eight? I was probably six years old. I grew up here, so okay. yeah. Okay, like 11. 11, probably 10 years old. 10, so you guys, this isn't your first one, obviously. No, no, but it feels like the first time every time we're here. It's so exciting. And what's not to like today? The weather's perfect. I mean, little breeze going, beautiful people everywhere. So. Tell me, what does back home again mean to you all? Well, it's where we see family, you know? I mean, that's this is, uh, this is a bigger event than Christmas for us or Thanksgiving. So it's just where we all get together. I can tell you, I feel like last night was, it was like sleeping right before Christmas. Oh, yeah, right? I couldn't sleep last night. I slept two hours, you know, you know, so I don't know. I just had a lot of anxiety for today, excitement. So Two hours, you and me both, we slept yeah, that sure, amount. I'm, sure. I'm not sure how long Brad Brown slept, but I know he's doing a lot right now. I want to send it over to him because he's gotten all of the inside scoop right now. Okay, guys. There are few things more iconic in motorsports than the Borg Warner Trophy, and the two men most directly associated with it are joining us now here on Breakfast at the Brickyard. Fred LaSalle, president of Borg Warner, Will Barons, the sculptor, the man with his hands on the faces. We'll talk to you in a second, Will, as his work has been displayed once again. Fred, for Borg Warner, the opportunity to have Elio as an ambassador for you over the past year, what has this ride been like leading up to this year's race? This is just awesome to be, to be part of this tradition since 1936, to have all those great drivers, to see the faces and the, the energy around this race, to see the fan back, you know, first year after COVID. I'm just thrilled to bring the, the trophy to, uh, to all the fans, and I can't wait to see who's going to win this year. When you see the buzz that the trophy gets, does it ever surprise you just how much it gets? I, it, I'm always surprised. That trophy as a power of attracting people you know i've done uh, half a lap with the trophy and a number of people taking pictures taking videos this is the biggest trophy for me the biggest trophy in the world of sport well done enjoy the day thank you very much enjoy the day too good will barons put elio castroneves face on here for the fourth time 32 for you in total tell me first about getting a chance to revisit these champions when you get a chance to have a, a four-time a three-time a two-time champion well with Helio it was exciting because I um, about six years ago the winner started coming to my studio for it for a day of sittings and everything and, and so that's the first time I'd really spent a lot of time with Helio such a wonderful engaging guy so even though I'd done his image three times this is the first time we really got to know each other a little bit so it was special in that way so. when you're back here it's been a couple years but to be in this place on this day what does that mean to you oh, my goodness you know it's I, I started this in 1990 and I was a race fan then but you know you think that my 33rd year here you think it start to get a little old and routine but it does not it's so exciting I'd look forward to it for, for months ahead every year and it's just thrilling to be here even, even after all these years congratulations on another job well done enjoy the day thank you good Will Barron's here from North Carolina. Fred, thank you, brother. Thank you very Enjoy much. the day. Absolutely. Beautiful day here. We are at the start-finish line where it will all end. Mark and Nicole are about 30 feet over in that direction. We'll send it back to them right now. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. You know, uh, here on the straightaway, we're seeing the cars start to roll out. We heard the announcement saying that they're starting to line up the, the rows yeah. uh, so the drivers can be in their starting positions yeah. there. So that means we're getting closer to the start yeah. of the race. Taking them from pits and lining them up. Right. The 11 rows at three for the 33 cars uh, starting to take their spot on the track. So that's exactly right. You know it's getting close. And I see Johnny Rutherford on the screen and Ari Leindyke cruising around in the convertible. So starting to bring all these former champions out and parade them around the track as well. And then in the next hour, we're going to meet the drivers, actually. That they're doing the driver inter introductions yes. before they get into their cars and, and start the race. Yeah. So many traditions, yeah. so many people just looking forward to being back out here today to see all those traditions. Yesterday I was out at the Coke lot and the planes were flying over practicing. Yeah. It was so neat to see. Yeah. I can't and, wait for it. And, you know, and let's not forget it's Memorial Day, right? right. So this is right. a big weekend right. to honor our veterans here and those currently serving as well. And IMS just does such a good job of honoring all them as well. And so that's all part of the pre-race festivities.
festivities coming up. We even just saw the honor guard march up onto the main stage here uh, for a special presentation. So, yeah, that tradition of honoring veterans during this yeah. weekend and those that have lost their lives yeah. fighting for us and, continues. And, 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 and IMS does it better than any other event I've seen. Yeah. So, it's, it's really good to see. <laughs> We've got a lot more breakfast at the Brickyard here this hour. Keep it here on WRTV. We'll be right back right after this. Race day in Indianapolis. There are few places more unique than to be here on the track as they grid these cars. The 11 rows of three are starting to come together. Back here in row number nine is where the race for history will commence as Elio Castroneves will go for his fifth victory at the Indy 500 in the number 06 AutoNation Sirius XM Honda for Meyer Shank Racing. After last year's thrilling victory, can Elio do it again? I had a chance to talk with him earlier this week about getting ready to make a run at his greatest win ever. What has been of this 365-day journey, the one thing that stands out for you at celebrating this whole thing again? Every single moment that I came back here has been special. Uh, with the unveiling of the ticket, uh, unveiling of the, uh, uh, the trophy, and then uh, earning a street, you know, <laughs> fourth street now is Castroneves Drive, and have the promo, you know, the promo, the, the, uh, it was a bit with my face, it's been, <clears throat> Incredible. Um, so I can't tell you one, but uh, obviously sharing that with my family, my, my daughter and my, my wife, it's, it's been spectacular. We've seen a lot of the family around here over the course of the last couple of weeks. Really, how special is that? Because for some of them, it's, it's sort of that first full time at really getting a chance to absorb champion Elio here at the Speedway. Yeah, even for them, you know, uh, well, my wife actually in 2009, she right. was already here, but my daughter was just like, she, uh, she feels like, Oh my dad is is, is is champ. Wow. So it's really cool to see that. However, you know, uh, we know the competitors, they look very into it. A lot of people still look into what we did last year, which was very good. So we got to got to move the focus a the laser focus now for this weekend. And talking to Simon, you guys have been trying to just find those little things with all of this new data that's been available to you. Has it kind of changed your perspective on how to get to race day and how to get to 500 miles with all these extra things a teammate this whole new everything for you yeah because last year remember was we had zero understanding however we knew what we had got to do it but and then all of a sudden we faced with scenario that we were like a few miles an hour slow we're like whoa now we got to think outside of the box and uh and that's why simon and i have been working really well together with andretti auto sports so uh make sure that we can find that perfect sweet spot. What are you most looking forward to in the hours leading up to this one on Sunday? Well, I'm looking forward to uh, to get in the car, see the the full house now, you know, just last year was, which felt like full house, but it was only half, so I can't wait to, uh, to be in that moment. And that full house just may very well get a chance to see Elio make one more climb of this fence like he did last year if he's the first to cross the finish line here after 500 miles. Hey, one thing we can tell you over there, this is Tunnel 7. Look at the hundreds and hundreds and thousands of fans that are making their way here into the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. They are going under the front stretch and making their way toward Pagoda Plaza. That's where our Megan Shin has been all morning and enjoying a beautiful race day here at IMS. Hi, guys. Hi, Megan. Hey Brad, oh my goodness, it is a gorgeous day to be out here and we have tons of fans showing up. So I want to take you over here to see the grandstand behind us with the fans just filling it up so far. We also have the cars, of course, coming here onto the track. And if our photographer can go to the other side as well, I'll let him show the crowds that we have just really piling up over in Gasoline Alley. It is a tremendous crowd for the 106 running of the Indy 500. I know we've been talking about this all morning, but more than 300,000 fans and it sure feels like it. You can definitely feel the energy out here. It is a spectacular day to be a part of uh, this big event and really to be a Hoosier. And of course, we expect the crowds to get even bigger. This is a huge event. We're expecting crowds even up close to the numbers that we saw for the 100th running of the Indy 500. But at this point in time, we have a beautiful day, beautiful weather. The wind's blowing just a little bit and it's truly a monumental moment for the Hoosier State. And Raphael and Kevin, I was talking about the weather and the wind up here just a little bit. I'm sure it's a lot more warm though down in the plaza. 
It's a little bit calmer in different ways. I think the energy of people, sort of the tsunami that we're feeling here. We just saw the green flag delivered by IU Health. We are getting so close. And so one of the ways that we could see what Rafael was talking about, when you're in Pagoda Plaza, and for that matter, when you're anywhere in the track, I think 85, 90% of the people can always see some huge big screen TV. So you feel connected to all these different things that are going on. But there's a lot of people that have found their seat already. And you're talking about a 1245 green flag, but they're in position. And of course, all those new renovations done under Roger Penske, who known as the captain. This will be his first race as the owner of this track where a full crowd is present. Of course, when he took over the track when the pandemic hit. So of course, it's, it's a, a big day for him. Yeah, so the welcome mat is out and, and finally all the pieces of the puzzle come together. Uh, the fans, the health of the community, and the weather. Yes. So that makes a huge difference, no doubt. Well, all these folks that are behind us, you used to be able to just walk freely. So as you can see, the cars are on the racetrack now, which is again another major move. As the cars go on the track, you know, we're getting ready for this day, and we cannot wait to see. Hey, how you doing? Oh, they're hassling us because they're, they're Bills fans. <laughs> they're okay. They're civil. They're all right. Uh, only, only Nikki Dementry loves the Bills fans, right? So, Well, so one of the factors may be during the race, at least something noticeable that teams will think about, is that wind gusting 20 to 25 miles per hour. Uh, it's on the fans' side of keeping a breeze, keeping you cool, but you got to watch out for that sun. Good job on the weather today. Right there. All Good right. prediction. You're always on it. We appreciate that. Whether it's sunny or stormy, we can count on you to give us the uh, forecast. You are watching Breakfast at the Brickyard only right here on WRTV. Welcome back to Breakfast at the Brickyard. Give you a live look as a lot of the fans here get a chance to walk on the track. They'll have to clear away eventually to make room for the cars and for the race to start. Take a look at I want to come out live here. We've got the green flag just delivered uh, to us in one of the pace cars there. And we featured the man who uh, delivered it in a story. Uh, he actually had a struggle with uh, with a health issue. And that's how they honor the folks that work at IU Health uh, and that have been saved by there. They bring the green flag. Just an amazing story we were able to share. And he's getting to come out here with his family today to be part of the race. All the traditions of the Indianapolis 500. Such a cool moment. This has just been such a, an amazing time to be here. You should see me. I'm just looking all around like It really is sensory overload. It, it, it is. is. There, there's a lot going on. And, you know, I haven't done this many years now. You kind of get used to the traditions, the timing of everything. So the green flag, and then, you know, pretty soon they'll, they'll start pushing everybody out of the pits, and then you really get into the driver introductions, and then, then it's off it. from there. I'm ready to take off this polo, get in my race gear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. You're ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, uh, we've got so much more lined up for you. Brad has been interviewing a lot of the drivers yes. that uh, will be on the track today. We're going to uh, toss things back to him. He's in the garages, uh, still catching up with folks before it's time for the green flag to wave. Okay, we were talking about pace cars. We're down here with the pace car. If Paul wants to walk over here with me, the 2023 Chevrolet Z06 that Sarah Fisher will lead the field of the green flag in. That is the pace car right there it's loud and it's fast and it's fantastic but get a look at the crowd that is down here right now Polly, get up the show i'm starting to fill in these grandstands here along the front stretch keep in mind two years ago i was lucky to be one of the like 1000 or so people that was it that was here for that race in august during the pandemic last year we had a crowd of about 135,000 in here it was a good day at the track but this feels like so much more. We hearken back to that 100th running in 2016. It's starting to feel like that. You start to get a sense that the buzz is building as we're just a little less than two hours until the green flag for the start of this year's race. Now, as for some of the storylines for this year, well, here we are. We made it to the front row. We poke our head around here, and we get a look at that PNC bank car of Scott Dixon. There's some locals there. Hi, guys. Can Dixie do it again? He's on pole for the fifth time. 
but it's been 2008 since he got his only Indy 500 win. They've been so close a couple of times. Will they have what it takes to make it to the end in P1 and be drinking that milk in victory circle? Now we'll back it up and work our way around to the rest of the front row. Remember Alex Pillow last year finished as the runner up to Elio Castroneves and had himself in position to maybe win this race. Well, here he is once again back at P2 on the grid, this time for the start of this year's Indy 500. The defending IndyCar Series champion, the young driver from Spain, has been so very good over the course of the last 16 months. Will they have what it takes in that other Ganassi car to get it done? And then on the outside of row one, it is that bright orange Bitcoin car of Ed Carpenter Racing and Renus VK. We talked with Renus earlier this morning about how excited he is to be back in a position to start this race from the front row. But can the young driver from the Netherlands piece together what it takes to get all the way to the end? As we talk to these drivers this morning, it is always so interesting to hear what they have to say about luck, to hear what they have to say about pit stops, all of the little things that it takes to make it to the end of this race at the front of the field. As we saw with Elio Castroneves last year, nobody expected that team to be in that position. And then all of a sudden, there they were at the end, making their way toward the front of the field. And Elliot was on his way to his fourth Andy win. Could he make it five today? Could it be another champion like Takuma Sato maybe winning his third? Can Alexander Rossi get it done as he continues his quest for a second Indy 500 title? The same for Tony Kanaan. And the same with the likes of Will Power and Simon Pagino as well. Bottom line, though, that we like most, Paul, we're going to take a walk here and see what we can do as we make our way through this crowd. It's just the exciting way that this has all come together here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Hi, guys. It's race day. Happy race day, indeed, as it is starting to fill up. And very soon, the better part of 300,000 fans will be here to witness the green flag and a race toward history here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It has been such a pleasure to bring you all of these stories over the course of the month of May as we have watched this come together and get back to just something that feels like something here at IMS at the Brickyard, this place that means so much to so many people. We've talked to families that have been here for decades and fans that have been here for the very first time. And very soon, we're all going to experience another back home again in Indiana, another green flag, and another 500 miles to glory here at IMS. For all of us at WRTV, it's been an absolute pleasure to spend race day morning with you. We hope you have a fantastic Memorial Day weekend as well. I'm Brad Brown from the greatest race course in the world, 16th in Georgetown, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. For all of us at WRTV, have a great race day.